गुड आफ्टरनून स्टूडेंट्स और बी ए इंग्लिश ऑनर्स महात्मा गांधी सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी मोतिहारी आई एम हियर टूडे टू अपलोड माई वीडियो लेक्चर ऑन द टॉपिक ट्रेडिशन एंड इंडिविजुअल टेलेंट बाय टी एस एलियट एज यू नो टी एस एलियट इज अ रिप्रेजेंटेटिव क्रिटिक ऑफ मॉडर्न इंग्लिश लिटरेचर इट इज कोरेक्ट टू से दैट कंसेप्ट ऑफ मॉडर्निजम इन इंग्लिश बिगिन्स विद द ग्रेट एस्टॉल वर्ड्स लाइक एलियट डब्ल्यू बी इट्स एंड डब्ल्यू एच ऑर्डन when we talk about eliot as a writer the most important thing about him is he is a classicist as a classicist you know eliot is primarily concerned with tradition he is concerned with form he is concerned with the formalistic aspects of a work of art eliot himself declared i quote i am a royalist in politics anglo catholic in religion and a classicist in literature my dear students the present essay tradition and individual talent which was published in 1919 for the first time in the egoist a journal and later it was published in the first book of criticism by t s eliot entitled the sacred wood it is also available in eliot selected prose and selected essays eliot like philip sidney wordsworth coleridge alexander pope appears to be a poet critic because whatever critical principles eliot formulates profounds he executes and implements his principles into his writings if you look at eliot's great works like the wasteland proof frog four quartets and even modern poetic dramas you find eliot practices and implements all his critical philosophies into his writings in the present essay my dear students in the present essay tradition and individual talent which is divided into three parts the first part discusses eliot's concept of tradition the second part deals with Eliot's concept of impersonality theory and the third part is in the form of conclusion well in the inaugural lecture series of my video lecture today i will discuss the first part of this essay that is eliot's concept of tradition that is how eliot defines tradition what he means by tradition before discussing eliot's concept of tradition as you know tradition is a wide term it is a term which is used by almost all the cultural theorists almost all the saints philosophers 
एंड ले पीपुल इन एवरी डे लाइफ जनरली ट्रेडिशन मीन्स ए काइंड ऑफ पास्ट विजडम इट कॉनोट्स ए काइंड ऑफ कोलेक्टिव बिलीफ इन द पास्ट इट रेफर्स टू ए काइंड ऑफ सेट ऑफ बिलीव्स कस्टम्स मैनर्स रिचुअल्स विच आर हैंडेड डाउन फ्रॉम जेनरेशन टू जेनरेशन एंड शेयर्ड बाय ए कम्युनिटी और ए सोसाइटी फ्रॉम जेनरेशन टू जेनरेशन बट यू डो एलियट डिस्कस ट्रेडिशन इन अनट्रेडिशनल वे हिज एटीट्यूड टू ट्रेडिशन इज नॉट ट्रेडिशनल इट इज समथिंग अनकन्वेंशनल इट इज डायनामिक एलियट डिपार्ट फ्रॉम द कंसेप्ट ऑफ ट्रेडिशनल कंसेप्ट ऑफ डेफ द टर्म एंड ही गिव जस्ट वट इज कॉल्ड ए मॉडर्न कंसेप्ट ऑफ ट्रेडिशन एलियट डिप्लोर्ड्स दैट द मोस्ट ऑफ द क्रिटिक्स यूज द टर्म ट्रेडिशन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सेंसर इन द फॉर्म ऑफ नेगेटिविटी एज ए डेरोगेटरी टर्म and eliot says that the term tradition needs to be reinterpreted it must be defined in the context of a work of art widely precisely and widely so eliot's concept of tradition is something dynamic and progressive when eliot describes tradition he describes it as a kind of uh, simultaneous order that is eliot discusses this order as a kind of fusion of past and present it is something which eliot connotes as historic timelessness and he says that when when we talk about aesthetic ideal order in creativity we talk about literary tradition before every writer because before any writer begins writing there is already an existing literary tradition which always guides which is always a kind of pioneer which is always a kind of uh, uh, presiding deity for the future writer to follow and write upon to improve upon the existing model so eliot's concept of tradition is something which tells us about his classicism because eliot does not give anything subjective something impulsive or something romantic about it his attitude is totally objective it is something conformist but this conformism is something very intelligent and you know uh, <coughs> eliot talks about tradition in the context of the wholeness the organic wholeness which is essential for the production for the creation of a work of art a poet must embody i quote the whole of the literature of europe from homer down to our times unquote that is eliot means to say that the whole literature of europe the whole culture the whole creative consciousness of europe is something undivided it is something holistic it is something continuum it is a kind of unbroken continuity of experience well chronologically when homer wrote and when eliot wrote when virgil wrote when shakespeare wrote there is a gap of there is a gap of time span 
But if you look into, if we just ponder over the basics, the the spiritual force behind the work which was composed in different epoch, we find that it is basically the same. It is basically the the great work that was produced. Writers belong to different period, but the kind of spirit, the kind of message, the kind of uh, theme they discuss is quite similar. It is quite ongoing. It is quite, uh, you know, common and cosmic. It appeals to the whole humanity. So that is, Eliot doesn't talk about tradition in a static way. There is something dynamic. There is something progressive. There is some something simultaneous about Eliot's concept of tradition. Now, Eliot is confirmed in belief that the most individual part of the work by a writer is those in which the dead poets, his ancestors, assert their immortality most vigorously. I repeat, I quote from the text, the most individual part of his work may be those in which the dead poets, his ancestors, assert their immortality most vigorously. Now, dear students, try to understand it uh, very cool-headedly. Uh, what is this undeniable influence of the past? How dead poets, how ancestors come to predominate the writing in the present? You know, there is a great critic in English. He is a new historicist, Stephen Greenblatt. He has uh, very wisely observed, I quote, I have a desire to speak with the dead. I repeat, Stephen Greenblatt writes, I quote, I have a desire to speak with the dead. Unquote. What Stephen Greenblatt wants to convey that the essence of the past, the meaning of the past, it continues to assert its important in the important role in the present. That is, the present and past, they are undivided. For a temporal writer, for a writer who, who means a kind of isolated, a kind of bifurcation in experience, past and present can be different sort of movements. But for a philosopher, for a great writer, for a real scientist, this past and present, they cannot be divided. Because the present cannot be uh, existing without taking the past into consideration. Eliot, you know, Eliot, like a great artist, he had the great vision about it. He deeply believed that present cannot be imagined without taking the past into consideration. And it's true because, you know, when we talk about the critic like Julia Christova, we find uh, this critic talks about intertextuality. That is, one text cannot be isolated from another because there is nothing new. Things are always same there. Only the form changes. Now, if we look at the great observation by Alexander Pope, he beautifully writes, I quote, True wit is nature to advantage dressed what oft was thought, but never so well expressed, I unquote. I repeat, Alexander Pope writes, I quote, True wit is nature to advantage dressed, 
what oft was thought but never so well expressed unquote that is pope also talks about putting the new putting the new wine in old bottle that is the material of the literature the material of the art is mostly the same it is only the form the style the innovation the stylistic which changes every time that is eliot also writes at a place novelty is better than repetition it means that the business of a writer the primary duty of a writer as a classicist he or she has to become different in his presentation different in his interpretation different in his way of writing he is not supposed to write something new but he is some supposed to introduce the way of writing something new so it simply means that the the process of writing in the present it has something integral to do with the past for example if a writer in europe is willing or wishes to write something today he or she cannot think in isolation from the great writers like homer dante shakespeare virgil sophocles aeschylus euripides etc similarly if a writer wishes to write something in the present india today he or she cannot afford to write without reading or without being influenced by the great classics of the past that is valmiki kalidas kabir tulsidas surdas etc it is it is something universal it is something something inspirational for every writer to begin with so you know elia talks about it about tradition in a very wise and profound way eliot says that we cannot even conceive or imagine to write something without being aware of the tradition but now the question is eliot asks how we can be aware of the tradition can we have this sense of tradition simply by inheritance simply by genetics simply because we are born in a society or community of that influence no not at all eliot says this concept of tradition cannot be inherited it is not something genetic rather this concept of tradition is acquired it is a strenuous process this sense of tradition is acquired by what is called i quote from the text historical sense historical sense eliot means by historical sense eliot means the the awareness of the presence of the past not the pastness of the past eliot says in order to write something really real something great a writer must have this kind of historical sense and this historical sense enables a writer to have sense of tradition and this historical sense is not something genetic it is not inherited rather this sense of tradition is acquired by a historical sense and this historical sense is obtained by being aware not only of the pastness of the past but its presence that is the part of past that is obsolete that is immaterial that is irrelevant has nothing to do with tradition only the essential the eternal the timeless the widely applicable aspect of the past is left to be part of tradition in the present so 
to dear readers and my dear students we have to understand it very wisely because tradition does not mean having a blind adherence or having a just a blind fidelity or blind you know conformism to the past tradition needs a kind of enlightened a kind of illuminating approach towards past it is only when we are able to derive the real and genuine inspiration from the past so eliot says that without being aware of the presence of the past without having historical sense nobody can be able to write really real or genuine work of art in the present this is the secret this is the mystery this is the essence of eliot's classicism now it is from here that eliot says that tradition is not something dead or something uh, non living or something formless or something uh, isolated eliot says every tradition has got a kind of uh, wisdom a kind of illumination and that's why eliot uses a phrase mind of europe he says the mind of europe is always guiding every writer of europe irrespective of the country or place where a writer is born every writer of europe is bound to influenced by the mind of europe because the private mind is subsumed by the more massive one i repeat eliot says the private mind is subsumed by the more massive one that is the personal or private mind of the writer is always influenced is always guided it is always directed it is always controlled it is always stabilized by the past influences by the pioneering writers of that community that continent and this mind is the mind of historicity this mind is the mind of historic consciousness this mind is something that is holistic and every individual writer you know every individual talent is a part of this great tradition because tradition is it is like a flowing river it is like an unfathomable ocean which is always there which is timeless which is eternal and every writer who wants to write something he or she has to dive deep into it because writing is not something eccentric writing is not something subjective writing is not something romantic writing is not something personal writing is a kind of surrender writing is a kind of mergence with past writing is a kind of elimination of the personality writing is a kind of transcendence writing is a kind of going beyond self every writing you know eliot says that every writing begins with the, with the writers continuous and continual surrender to the tradition and that is why the essay tradition and individual talent it is representative essay of t s eliot because it is an official manifesto of eliot's critic critical principle which came to form the foundation of later writing by eliot and it is here that eliot lays down his 
his eternal his universal his valid critical proposition which he follows throughout his life so in the present lecture i have tried to explain the first part of the essay that is tradition and individual talent and in the first part of the essay as you have already come to know eliot discusses the meaning the significance the definition of tradition the second part of the essay that is impersonal theory which is most important i will discuss i will upload in the later part maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow and then conclusion i will discuss and you know uh, in this nation wide lockdown due to corona virus today uh, i have tried to unlock myself and uh, convey myself my views of uh, t s eliot's tradition and individual talent uh, so that my dear students should not and need not find any problem in preparing their syllabi for coming papers because this is the time when we should be aware of the the suggestions the measures the preventive measures which government of india the state government or university have directed us to follow so let's stay at home let's work from home and i am very happy that my colleagues of department in particular and my different colleagues from various departments of mgcub they are taking sincere pain to reach out to to their students through video conferencing through facebook through uploading their video lecture so this series this effort will continue and i wish all my students a very bright future ahead and i expect my students my colleagues to follow the preventive and suggestive measures of the government and try to maintain their neighborhood neat and clean their family neat and clean and take care to keep themselves hale and hearty wise otherwise because after all life is precious and after all human life is priceless and let's stay tuned and let's query one another if you have any suggestion if you have any uh, query regarding the writer you can forward your query your uh, points and i'll be able to respond to your query later on thank you very much wish you all the best thank you have a nice day